Let's talk about the science of trading. Because trading is a game, and like any game, there are rules to it. If you don't know those rules, it can be a very expensive lesson. How much can you afford to lose? How much do you need to win? How often do you need to win versus lose? Well, today I'm going to show you everything, and the numbers might surprise you. Let's start with what it takes to get back to break even. Now, losses are unavoidable. But what most people don't realize is how much harder it is to make up the loss the bigger it gets. And past a certain point, the numbers really just stop making sense. Lose 3% on a trade? Fine. Make 3%, you're back to break even. It's actually like 3.1, but I rounded. Lose 5%, you're back at break even at 5 and a quarter. Even a 10% loss is recoverable with just an 11% gain. But beyond that, the numbers really start working against you. 20% requires 25 to get back. A 30% loss needs a 43% gain to get back. Lose 40%, you need 67. Lose 50, you need to double your money on the next trade to get back to break even. 60, 70, 80% gains are almost unrecoverable. And a 90% loss, you might as well just quit. This is why I believe so firmly in keeping losses small. 5 to 10% is really the sweet spot. Maybe every once in a while I'll stretch that to 12 to 15, but I am never going to be using 20, 30, 40 plus percent stop losses on stocks simply because I know sometimes I'm going to be wrong, and when I am, whew, that's a tough one to overcome. So let's take this a step further. Here we have a table comparing 20 trades, both a 2 to 1 ratio, both winning 50% and losing 50%, but with drastically different results. Down the left side, you had 10 100% gains and 10 50% losses. You're batting 50-50, you're making twice what you lost, but at the end, look at this yellow number, you come out at break even. Because if you take $1,000, you double it, you now have 2000 but then you lose 50%, you're back to 1000 It keeps bringing you back to scratch. But look what happens when our average gain is just 10% and our loss is cut down to 5 Same 2 to 1 risk-reward ratio. Same 50% win rate. But the result is drastically different. By keeping the losses small, targeting smaller gains, we net a 55% gain at the end. If we adjust these again, going to 20% gains and 10% losses, the results are even better. But beyond that, again, the numbers really start to work against you. 10% losses, kind of that 8 to 10% range is really the sweet spot. Beyond that, the numbers really start to fall apart fast. The other big secret of the science of trading is keeping losses small. And before you close out this video, I know, I know you've heard this so many times. I know it is a broken record that every professional says, keep losses small, keep losses small. And you hate hearing it. You just want to learn how to make money. But the reason they hone in this point and beat you over the head with it is that is the thing that finally took them over the threshold from being up and down and up and down to consistently staying up, and this is why. Now, on this table here, we have basically, again, 50-50 win-loss rate, the gains on the top, the losses on the bottom, and we've just got some randomized numbers here on the top. Now, left to right, they're the same. 5%, 8, 11, 14, 19, 25, etc. Same numbers over here. And you can see, on average, out of these 10 on both sides, the average gain is 23%. On the bottom, the average loss in both occasions is 10%. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, totaling 100. 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2 plus 82, totaling 100. So you'd think with 20, get, with 20 trades, the same average gain, the same average loss, you'd come out the same, and boy, would you be wrong. On the left, you finish with only a 15% gain. On the right, 168%. This is the power that one big loss can have. Again, same total amount of losses. But the fact that there is one big one knocks you out. And don't think it's because of the order. You can move these numbers anywhere you want. You can move the negative 82 to first, swap the negative 2 down there, same deal. 
You can put the negative 82 as your very first trade. Think, oh, I'll do it when it's small and bring the 5% gain down here. Same result. Move these around all you want. The math won't change. But the fact that you kept every loss to sub 10%, even though 9 out of 10 of these losses were significantly bigger than the ones on the right, you still fared far, far, far better. So again, we have to cut losses off. We have to keep them small, even if it means missing out on some upside. And you look over here on the right, say that means we missed the, 15, the 50% gain and broke even on that one. Still did drastically better. Let's say we also missed this 25% winner. Still did better. Let's take out this 19% gain. Say that was break even. Still did better. And we took out three of our big wins simply by keeping losses down to 10%. When it comes to the science of trading, your rewards must outweigh your risks. Period. Hard stop. That's on a per trade basis. That's on an annual basis. It's every single metric. And look at this. Look at these various annual returns. Now you'd think, hey, you made 10% one year, then 10, then lost 10. Still doing pretty good, right? Not really. You're averaging just 2.9% a year. Even 20% years, if met by a third year where you lose, does it do very... None of these numbers. Even if you're making 50% a year, then take a 50% hit. It's None of these even keep pace with the market averages because you're risking as much as you're gaining. It's never going to work that way. I don't care if you're right 60% of the time. In this case, you're right 66% of the time, but you're barely profitable. The other way to look at risk and why we want, at minimum, two-to-one risk-reward is your gains are financing your losses. If you've been trading for more than seven seconds, you know you're not going to win every time. There's going to be some losses. Let's plan for them. Now, as much as I'd love to take credit for this, this I actually got from Mark Minervini, but it's, it's, again, just basic math. He calls it a 2R profit, which means two times your risk, and you can change this do it 8% stop or 10 or 5, whatever, but the math is the same. When you're risking half of what you're trying to make, when you're targeting 10% for 5 or 20 for 10, any one win is going to pay for two losses. So as long as you're winning one out of three times, you're at break even. And it's going to make the losses a lot easier to stomach when it's half of one of your wins. I'm going to steal one more image from Mark Minervini because he is the original scientist when it comes. He's one of the greatest who's ever done it. And he talks about trading uh, in terms of getting odds on your money. When it comes to gambling, laying odds means you are risking more than you're going to get back if you're right. Getting odds is the opposite. And you can see here in this table, when you're risking 50 to get one, you need to be right 98% of the time. Look at how... These numbers progressively improve. Risking 10 to make one, again, you need to be right 90% of the time, 80, 75, 60. It just doesn't work. If you're risking more than you win, you must be right more than you're wrong. And in the world of trading, there are a very small handful of investors who are right more than they're wrong. You'd think the pros get it right 75, 80% of the time, right? Not even close. The best traders in the world are right 55, maybe 60% of the time, and that's in a good market. But they're getting odds on their money. But as you go below one-to-one, look how nice it gets. If you're risking a dollar to make two, you only need to be right 33% of the time. If you're getting three-to-one on your money, you only need to be right a quarter of the time. One to five, one to ten, get substantially better. And if you're risking a dollar to make 50, you only need to be right 2% of the time. Now, that one's a bit far-fetched. But again, the sweet spot is really in that kind of one to two, one to three ratio. Now, I could spend hours on this topic. You'd all be asleep by the end. But to me, it's interesting. The science of trading is just that. It is science. You have to work the numbers in your favor. And the way to do that is simple. Number one, Always risk less than you're trying to make. Number two, keep those losses to 10% at a maximum, ideally in that 5 to 8% zone. If you don't know how to do that, go to my channel, watch the video titled I Can Make Anyone a Profitable Stock Trader, and you'll see my go-to breakout setup, the one we almost never need to risk more than 10% on. And three, 
don't take any big risks. Don't say just this one time. Don't, I know I shouldn't follow the rules, but this one's a home run. I know I'm down 30 or 40%, but it's going to come back. Don't do it. That one trade will mess up an entire year of discipline trading. Stops less than 10%. Risk-reward ratio of 1 to 2 or better. And simply turn over your edge as often as possible and let the power of compounding do its work.